but let's stay with the review or the statement that we got yesterday. I need to remind you, Rishi Sunak will be with me later in the hour, but let's turn first to Warwick Lightfoot, who's Head of Economics and Social Policy at the Policy Exchange and was a special advisor to three chancellors, uh, all of whom were Conservatives, one of whom went on to be Prime Minister. I speak of now Sir John Major. Uh, Mr Lightfoot joins me now. Uh, the eyes of the Financial Times, Mr Lightfoot, the, effectively what Mr Sunak said was a, an indictment or an implicit indictment of the government's handling of the pandemic. Is that criticism fair in your eyes? Good morning. Morning. Um, I, I, I'm not sure whether it is. I mean, my, my own view is there was always going to be a tension between saving lives and losing economic activity in the short term. And I'm an economist, and I give great priority to economic welfare and all the things we want from an economy. But you know, I'm speaking uh, from Plymouth this morning, mm. and I, what I'm going to say to you is there's no use having a brilliant economy if you end up viewing it from the wrong end of, end of the effort crematorium. Yes. And, and I think at the start, the Lancet made it plain, and I think they were right, and so did Sir Roy Anderson, the uh, great mathematician who's behind all the um, analysis of health uh, crises like this. Uh, he was the person who invented these models uh, with Lord May way back 20-odd uh, and more years ago, um, made it plain there would be that tension. And I think that the um, the government was right to give priority to our health and medical. That's that's a private view. I'm, I'm not capable of judging the health. I'm an economist. And then what, because of the nature of our economy, it comes through from one of the tables that the OBR published where you have such an important hospitality and service sector inevitably uh, an economy uh, where people were going to be careful about going out and about, uh, either through government direction or from their own caution, was going to see a substantial contraction. If you'll allow that this stance cannot be continued forever, and I sense you would, should we have had some of the ground prepared for when exactly we intend to pay back for this rather than a rather catch-all once the economy has recovered, as he said? I think that the, uh, you, you can't borrow on this sort of scale in, norm, in the normal course of events in conducting your business in a normal way. But this isn't the normal course of events. This is more like a natural uh, disaster, uh, an environmental disaster or wartime crisis where you do very unusual things and then you, you should return to some element of uh, uh, normality. And the United Kingdom is, is one of the lucky countries, like the United States, that it has the capacity to borrow. And I was, when I was Chancellor, when I was um, an advisor at the, to the Chancellor Exchequer, and when I worked at the Department of Employment some 30, 35 years ago, of course, policymakers were very constrained. You had high and unstable inflation. Inflation went up to 10% when I was working at the Treasury. And you also had very high interest rates. And that constraint of inflation and um, high interest rates isn't present. And there's an enormous demand for debt issued by governments like that of the United States and the United Kingdom uh, across the world. So we're in a very strong position to actually borrow and spread the cost over a long term. And one of the interesting things is the way in but, which, in an environment where it was already much cheaper to borrow, much cheaper than the time when I was uh, yes. working at the Treasury, but, despite all the borrowing that's taken place, not just in the present pandemic, but in the last 10 years, but, the the amount we spent everywhere to service that debt has right. actually fallen. But let me ask you this, just, just briefly, one of the chancellors with whom you worked, uh, Norman Lamont, writes uh, in the Daily Telegraph today, it's all very well and good, unless those interest rates change. Briefly, Mr Lightfoot, what happens then? He's a hostage to fortune then, isn't he? The, we have one of the longest debt maturities in the world, and the key thing is to sell this debt for as long mature as possible. So you should be aiming for 30, 50 and 100 year bonds. And I would also explore what interest international investors would have in permanent debt. You know, before 1939, more than half the gilt stocks issued by the British government were permanent debt that never got to be paid. And I think we should actually be extending the maturity of our debt so we take advantage of all these very low rates of interest. When you can borrow for 0.8% uh, for 30 years, uh, you want to lock that in right now and not mess about. And I, I think... And I will leave it there only for time reasons. Warwick Lightfoot, thank you. Head of Economics and Social Policy at the Policy Exchange. You work with three former chancellors.